Hi, Tracy. Hiya. Hi, Carolyn. Hey, sorry about that. Whoops. Oh, yeah. One minute. One minute. Hold on. Can you see I can me? I you. I can. Oh. How oh, yeah. are you? Yeah, no, I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Hi, Sarah. It's really nice to meet you. I'm just trying to get my headphones to work because you're coming out of the... Oh, out of the computer? Yeah. And it's... No, why am I not? I'm just going to see if I've got another pair of headphones. Hang on a sec. Yeah, for sure. We've got some time. So thank you so much for doing this. I'm thrilled. Oh my God, that's so lovely of you to ask. And we want to do the same the other way as well. So I would yeah, love that. Because what we're doing, we're bringing, um, we're bringing this new kind of thing called Fertility Book as part of IVF Babble. Yes. And, um, and on it, we want, to, it's like a directory of clinics, of wellness, of whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. and, um, and also charities. And oh. so uh, we, yeah, we'd love you to do a video, which we can put on that. I would love um, that. Things that you do. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to do a little bit more, you know, when you guys have some time, I know this probably month might be crazy, but to look at, you know, are there ways we can partner more closely, you know, through 2021? Um, you know, I feel, I think with COVID now that we've really, the conversations have started to happen over and over. You know, it's not just happening in your own little community. You're able to connect and it's nice to connect people through um, these virtual meetings. So I would love to figure out if there's a way that we can, you know, do more of the, even just more of the chit chats, you know, I can connect yeah. UK patients to Canadian patients and have like interview a UK patient. We have a, new series we launched it's called ttc time to chat and oh, brilliant. It's, yeah it's on tuesdays now it's late it would be late for people in the uk but we could we could play with maybe we would pre-record it or something because it happens at 8 p.m eastern so 8 p.m toronto time so it'd be after midnight for you but i think that that would be an awesome way to connect and it's peer-to-peer -peer, so it's a, one patient interviews another patient for about 15 oh, or 20 you know, minutes that is that is so funny because we've been talking about wanting to do something like yeah. that. But like you say, maybe we can incorporate this then. This would be awesome. Because we, we could get UK patients to speak to Canadian, to speak, we, because now our readership, I do, I'm not quite sure how it's happening, but 60%, well, 63% is in the States. Wow. Um, and so uh, we could bring in US mm -hmm. patients or, you know, people that are happy to share their stories. I think that would be awesome. Yeah, it'd be amazing. Don't yeah. you think, Hans? Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Okay, sorry, this I'm, is lovely. Sorry. No, you're okay. Is not I can't, my head, but I'm just gonna have to take those out. That's okay. You, can is you mine hear? okay? I can hear you one perfectly clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is mine okay? They were acting a little bit funny earlier in a couple of Yeah, meetings, no, so. no, I can hear you clearly. Okay, yeah. perfect. So, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Tracy. No, I was just, just going to say, um, Sarah has been glamming it up with Sam Smith's afternoon. <laughs> well, actually, well, to be fair, he was, we just rehearsed today. He's in tomorrow morning at eight. Oh my gosh. Do you like Sam Smith? I've been love. with him. Oh, I'm in, just in love with him. We just did, um, we just recorded like a, a live concert. Well, I say live concert, mm -hmm. you know, People, bands are doing live streams, so yeah. we just did one at Abbey Road. Oh my! And God. then um, 
and then we did like, on the weekend we recorded performances for like good morning america the james corden show like all oh, james corden i think is my current favorite i love 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 watching him He's a funny man to watch. Mm -hmm. He's not so funny to work with, shall we say. I have heard that. I did hear that. <laughs> but I love like the, I like the clips where he makes people do these weird things. And, oh my God. You yes. know, it's yes. so funny. Well, the karaoke car, whatever it is. Oh, I know. That's really funny. I know, it's great. That and it's a good really way to kind of connect with, pa with, uh, with patients. Yeah. With, I, I like that more personal side of things. It's not as scripted, or maybe it is scripted, but it seems a little, from the outside looking in, it looks pretty, pretty fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So ladies, I know it's late. I know you've had a long day. Happy World Fertility Day, first of all. Um, I'm going to just take us live. I'm going to start the process to take us live to our Facebook page. We can chat for 10 minutes, fit like, and, and I'll help allow you to sort of guide the conversation. I'm gonna, just going to ask you to explain World Fertility Day what, how you got started, why it's really important, how patients can connect and what patients can kind of look forward to maybe through 2021. And we'll talk about maybe about more collaboration between our two organizations. And I want to talk a little bit about the Fertility Ox um, campaign, the videos. So we launched them today officially in Canada. So I know they launched in the UK um, a couple of months ago. So we're launching it to celebrate World Fertility Day and having that conversation over the next five weeks. So I don't know if it's Sarah, if it's more, if that's, I know that you, I think you worked on that a little bit to launch in the UK or? Yeah, so, it was, so it's the fairing campaign mm -hmm. and they just used our platform. That's right. To, to promote it. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's something that we just felt very passionately about. So mm -hmm. we, to just and were you involved in the creation of the videos? No, no, no we were launching just in, it into just in terms of the promotion. Okay, great. So maybe we'll just touch quickly on you know how it went over in the UK and with your viewership and yeah. perfect. Okay, just give me one second there. I'm going to take us to Facebook and you'll see us live there. Oops. I think I've turned off all my gadgets, but. Sorry, it just takes a couple of seconds to connect. I can post another video whilst we're. Okay, just give me one sec and we'll be live. Hello, everybody. Hello, Tracy. Hello, Sarah. To everybody watching, my name is Carolyn Dubay. I'm the Executive Director with Fertility Matters Canada. We're the national patient organization to help provide information, education, and support to those people who are struggling to build their families. And I am thrilled, thrilled to be with you today. World Fertility Day is November 2nd. And I'm here with Tracy and Sarah, all the way from the UK. So it's really late where they are. The co-founders, not only of IVF Babel, but also of World Fertility Day. And we're here um, with the gracious sponsorship of Faring Pharmaceuticals, who has helped us um, to make this connection and for um, some of the things we're going to talk about today. So Sarah and Tracy, thank you so much. I'd love to connect um, and I'd love for you to tell the audience um, a little bit about World Fertility Day and what it is and because it's really almost brand new well it's it's something that we started about sort of three just over three years ago 
We felt very strongly after our journeys. Mine was 10 years to have my beautiful twins and Sarah's was five. Um, we felt that there wasn't enough information out there. And certainly that um, when I was younger, I didn't have any form of education or realization that actually you couldn't just have a child when you wanted one. I didn't know that there would be issues along the way. And um, Sarah and I felt really strongly that why wasn't there a fertility day, a well fertility day out there to break the silence, to break stigmas, to break rid taboos, and following various visits um, to India, Africa, various um, places around the world, we felt super strongly that we had to create a World Fertility Day. So, um, as I say, that started three years ago, and each year it's getting bigger and bigger, and we are so passionate about breaking the silence. With one in six people worldwide experiencing infertility or fertility issues, there really should be a lot more education out there. And so that's in effect what we're trying to do. It's amazing. And, 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 I, and I'd add to that one, one part of um, World Fertility Day that I, you know, that I especially am really passionate about is um, my journey was incredibly lonely. So I was trying to conceive, um, so 15 years ago now, so my twins are 10. And 15 years ago, there was no Instagram, there wasn't really any Facebook or anything like that. So I felt incredibly isolated and incredibly alone and felt like I was the only person in the world that couldn't conceive. And so part of World Fertility Day now is acknowledging this wonderful community that exists. You know, the fact that you can get on your phone and just by looking at some of these accounts, you can see that there are literally millions of people across the globe who are feeling just like you. And, you know, you, you, you can just send a message and get that support straight away, you know, by some of these brilliant, 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 you know, TTC warriors. And so um, that's another big shout out today, you know, acknowledging those wonderful people who are just wanting to help other people. It's true. It's an amazing community. And the more we talk, I mean, I'm sitting here in Canada, you're all the way across the ocean, and we've connected through this community, um, mostly because of our, of our work, but also, you know, as um, fertility patients and all three of us moms of twins as a result. So um, thank you for, for explaining that. I think it's incredibly important. And I applaud the work that you have been doing. Um, I remember having these conversations, Tracy, with you back several years ago when World Fertility Day was coming and the, the first World Fertility Day and your planning process and all of the things that were going in, um, into play and, and the connection with Louise Brown. So um, who is the first baby born through IVF, for those of you who don't know. Um, so thank you for all of the work. Um, what our viewers may not know are that, that Tracy and Sarah are also the faces behind IVF Babel. And I know that, well, I just wanted to talk about that and give you a shout out for connecting this global community through your correspondence, your online magazine, IVF Babel. So if you're not connected with them, please check that out. Um, you'll get an email weekly and they've got great content online. So I just encourage people to, to connect with the TT, TTC community that way as well. So oh, for World Fertility Day 2020, um, are there some highlights or there's some things that, you know, you've been working on or things that you want patients to know? I think, um, oh, so, sorry, sorry, did no, you want no, to go? No, go, go, go you, you talk. No, no, well, I mean, all I was going to say was, um, I think following my journey of 10 years, um, the one thing that I would pass on to people uh, is that going through the same um, is diagnosis is key. And so that really, for me, um, is uh, truly important to um to go ahead and do 
And if you've been trying for six months or a year and it's still not happening, um, go, uh, go and see a doctor, a fertility consultant, um, and have the right tests. And with that diagnosis, um, it, it, could, it could save you so much time. Emotion, it's emotionally draining um, and physically draining. And so don't wait the 10 years that I did. Um, address okay. that as, as soon as um, you're able. Mm -hmm. And I would say at one year, go speak to a doctor mm -hmm. and get those tests. Great advice. But sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. That's absolutely brilliant advice. Do your research as well. You know, I, I've, I've said, you know, a kajillion times before, I think my journey would have been a lot shorter had I done my research. You know, I had IUIs that were never going to work. Mm -hmm. When I look back, it's like, <laughs> you know, I've said it before, my husband was in a rock band when I, when we were trying for a child, he was on tour playing the bass every night. IUI was never going to work. And yeah, I had two rounds of IUI and then an IVF and then ICSI. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know, I didn't know what it was. I was like, okay, fine, I'll, I'll have that. Okay. And then, um, and then I got Severo HSS. Um, and, you know, I, I describe it as I didn't read the instructions, you know, you know, when they kind of give you the, this might happen and mm -hmm. listen, I, I was just like, just give me, just get me pregnant, get me pregnant. Of course. And so missed all the signs and ended up in two, you know, two weeks in hospital, which was utterly, utterly horrific. Wow. So do your research and ask questions. Mm -hmm. Advocate for yourself. We do a lot of talking about that, advocating. Um, and part of the work that we do with Fertility Matters is helping to educate patients um, prior to seeing uh, their clinicians or prior, prior to being seen at a fertility clinic to help them feel educated and more empowered to make these decisions, to ask questions. Sometimes you don't even know what you're supposed to be asking. And so it's really important to continue to educate share resources, that's what we love to do, share resources like IVF Babel, like World Fertility Day, to connect people to this global community um, so that they see that they are not alone, that there is information out there, um, and to really help them feel that they can take charge of their fertility journey because really, if they're not doing it themselves, um, no one else will help, will, will do that for them. So incredibly important messaging, ladies. I really appreciate it. So as part of our celebration um, for World Fertility Day, we're kicking off a brand new campaign, which I know has already um, been through the UK. It's called uh, Fertility Ox, hashtag Fertility Ox in partnership with Bearing Pharmaceuticals. Um, so we're going to be helping to elevate the conversation and help people speak more properly about um, fertility and family building and issues that people can, can come, um, that they may come across. Um, so there's some, this brilliant uh, video series that we'll be sharing over the next five weeks. So I'd love um, some of your feedback, ladies, about what patients in the UK have been saying about this project and um, the feedback that you got um, when the videos were released. I think what's so absolutely brilliant about the way that these videos have been shot and, and produced is that they are done with um, humour. Mm -hmm. you know, they deliver these um, awkward conversations that patients have had with such genius that you're laughing, and, but you're laughing, um, you're not laughing at the patient, you're, laugh you're laughing at how ridiculous the comments were from the person who mm -hmm. thought they were trying to be helpful. Right. And, and, and that's really key in the message that Farring was saying that no, we're not trying to, they weren't trying to sort of point the finger and say, you, you know, you're, you're bad for saying this. People are trying to help, but it's those that are trying to help. that just don't know what to say that end up saying the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. So this campaign was brilliant at, um, you know, when we were sharing it, we were saying, get your friends and relatives to watch these videos because they might actually learn something about, you know, you don't, you don't have to fill the silence. Absolutely. You know, sometimes, sometimes you just don't need to say anything. You know, you just sort of just feel it. Just read the room. Don't try and <laughs> fill them with really cringy, awkward <laughs> conversations. And, and I know both myself and Tracy have experienced our own 
really awkward conversations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've shared with it before. My, my friend's, my husband's cousin is a dairy farmer and she knew I had PCOS and she compared me to her dairy cows who also have PCOS wow. and suggested that perhaps I just got some fresh air because um, it helped with her cattle. <laughs> I don't know that that what you did you try to get some fresh air Sarah did you did that you work know, I, for swiftly you? Left, I swiftly left the room and stood out <laughs> <laughs> to get your fresh air <laughs> but oh. um, but yeah the campaign was just it's just genius it really is genius and it delivered is. Completely. yeah we're really excited to to share the content and like you said to bring a little humor I think it's time you know, this year has been heavy for a lot of people. So to, to lighten the mood and allow people to have these conversations um, and give them almost a note sometimes when they, when they get into these awkward conversations. So uh, we're hoping that, you know, our viewers will use them as an opportunity to educate their family and friends and those that they are, um, you know, connected with through social media to help elevate that conversation. Yeah. And mm -hmm. just, just, just knowing that actually it's okay for you to say to your family members or friends, do you mind if we just don't talk about this? Or do you, do you mind if we, do, you know, you can steer it yourself. Absolutely. About you not, you not feeling awkward about talking to your family. But that's it a, is. That's a great up. That's a great point. Yeah. It's, it's bloody difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, do you have anything you'd like to add before we sign off? Um, I just think what Sarah's just said about the Fertility Orcs campaign, um, everything she said, it, it is amazing. Um, Ferry Pharmaceuticals has done an amazing job with the Fertility Orcs. Um, as far as, well, Fertility Day, um, just basically we, just passion we're so passionate and dedicated to increase this every year um, and take it up a notch and hopefully it will go some way in breaking the silence across the world and what fertility matters in Canada does is amazing by the way Caroline we haven't spoken enough about what you do thank you Tracy. Um, thank you so much for inviting us today as well well, thank you for accepting my invitation. It's an incredible way to, um, to connect, to connect communities. And I think it's incredibly important to help um, all of the people in the world who are struggling to build their families, whether they're in the middle, at the beginning of the journey in the middle, or if they're on the other side, there is a community that you are always connected with. And I think it's incredibly um, important to continue to have these conversations. And I thank you both for all of the work that you do. You are two global leaders who I look up to, who I am incredibly honored to know. And I, uh, I hope that we will continue this partnership and friendship throughout 2021 and to celebrate many World Fertility Days to come. Oh, we, we are super inspired by you too, Carolyn. And, um, and thank you so much again for inviting us. Thank you. And for all of you watching, thank you for tuning into this episode of Figuring Out Fertility. Again, Tracy and Sarah from IVF Babel and the co-creators or co-founders of World Fertility Day, a day to celebrate, educate, and um, continue the conversation of fertility worldwide. And again, thank you to our supporters, Faring Pharmaceuticals, not only for making this broadcast possible, but also for the Fertility Ox campaign that we are now running uh, for the next five weeks. Ladies, thank you so much. Enjoy your evening and we'll be in touch thank really soon. Thank you so soon. much, Karen. You take care. You Lots too. Bye-bye. <laughs>